Hey, this is Nick with FAMI, and this is a quick review for the award-winning Motorola Zoom tablet. This is the first tablet to run Google's new Android 3.0 Honeycomb operating system, which is very different from the previous Android versions made for smartphones. A quick rundown of the specs. It packs a 1 gigahertz NVIDIA Tegra 2 dual-core processor, 1 gigabyte of RAM, 10.1 inch display, 1280 by 800 resolution, 5 megapixel rear facing camera with 720p recording, 2 megapixel front facing camera, HDMI 1.4 port, 32 gigabytes of built in storage, Bluetooth, Wi Fi, accelerometer, a gyroscope, and it also includes a barometer. It has a micro SD slot, but it doesn't work yet. Supposedly, it may be enabled in the future. Another thing is the Zoom does not support flash right now, which is surprising to me at least, because they are really promoting that. So we are going to have to wait for another software update. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the box right now. And here is the Zoom. Basic manual guides. The charging adapter. Which is really tiny and the micro USB for data transfer and that's it okay on the bottom we have the micro USB and HDMI port along with the charging port which is really small and on the left side we have the notification LED along with the front facing camera and privacy light on the top we have the headphone jack along with the SIMS card slot. This can be activated with LTE in the future. On the back, we have the power button, speakers, dual LEDs, five megapixel camera, and another speaker. On the left side, we have the volume controls. That's it. The Zoom will cost $5.99 with a two-year service contract, or $7.99 without a contract. Verizon confirms you'll be able to purchase it without a data plan, but a salesperson may try to convince you to purchase one anyways. One gigabyte of data for 20 bucks a month if you do purchase. Wi-Fi only version available soon for a cheaper price. The Zoom will be upgradable to 4G LTE in the second quarter of this year for free, but you may have to ship it in for a week to get it upgraded. The Zoom is made with high quality materials. Gorilla glass and plastic helps make up the screen. It has a soft aluminum body and it's about the same weight of the iPad. A tiny bit heavier actually, but you can't tell the difference. The black bezel border is thinner than the iPad, and you won't be able to charge the Zoom via USB or micro USB, since it uses its own charger. But if you use the docks available from Motorola, it will charge the tablet through the micro USB slot. This right here is the interface of the Zoom. You can navigate in Honeycomb by using the soft buttons, which takes a while to get used to, but it feels, but it feels fine after. The buttons rotate with the display, so when you turn the tablet over, it'll always be there. Gmail and the other apps look pretty nice with the two column layout, almost like a desktop. And the browser renders pages pretty quickly. It also allows you to have multiple tabs in a single window. Here's the home screen. It has a wall of boxes that are swipeable left to right. Google and voice search on the upper left corner. Button to open the apps drawer shortcuts, and widgets on the top right. It's also surprising that Motorola didn't skin the zoom with Moto Blur. The layout for YouTube is pretty amazing. I like how I can navigate around, and the image quality of the video content is pretty sharp, including high definition videos. Prepare for the return of awesomeness. My fist hungers for justice. That was my... Everybody was Jack Black. Kung Fu Staring Contest. Go! I was really hoping to try out the Flash content, but obviously it's not possible right now. When we are talking about specs, the Zoom dominates. It's made with high quality materials and feels great to hold. But when we are talking about the OS and usability on launch, to me the device feels a bit rushed. No Flash support. Features of the device have to be enabled in the future, and sometimes Honeycomb feels a bit clunky at times, in addition to some bugs. But then again, that usually happens with the first version of any software. 
Also, there would be a lack of apps for Honeycomb, since it is still new. My next video will cover Honeycomb 3.0 in more detail. Be sure to check out my previous videos on the Motorola Atrix review, which was launched just recently. And also be sure to visit Famia.com for the latest accessories for your device.